If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian's strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit tanklessmadesimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. Wait, don't trash that used or broken computer, monitor, or TV. Do the right thing. Recycle your unwanted or non-working electronics for free. You can recycle computers, monitors, and televisions with eCycle Washington. Households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations may drop off unwanted TVs, computers, and monitors at over 300 locations in Washington State for free. Find the location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org and click on Where Can I Recycle? That's eCycleWashington.org. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's our loud and local band of the week, Lasting. local band of the week last thing you want to find out how you can get their music just go to the bj and migs page of kisw.com get their brand new record it's their debut release and it's titled the silent scream just came out last week and if you want local music we got it for you sunday nights at eight o'clock on the rock it's a show called loud and local two solid hours of pacific northwest music with great bands like lasting Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Party yeah. this weekend. It's going to be warm out there. My two kids are taking a hike, and they better bring lots of water. Take oh, a hike. Oh, yeah. yeah they they, they going back up to that poo-poo point? No, she's taking Joe somewhere else. Where I think she's trying to kill her brother. I really oh. do. <laughs> Well, I mean, the well, last nice. one really, he was, he was, uh, I winded know. was, uh, definitely. Yeah, he was dying there. up there. And Sarah's like, good, let's take another longer hike. Hey, the last time they took a hike, they came back with dicks. Pardon me? Burgers. Burgers. Oh, right. Yes, that's right. Well, yes. congratulations on that. So it might work out again for you. Yeah, maybe I'm you'll get some burgers. Looking forward to something good, that's for sure, because I am not taking that hike. <laughs> Let's get to our contestant today. We've got Kyle and Yelm. Kyle, are you there? Hold on. The button's not yeah. working. There he is. Kyle? Yes, sir. Yeah, how you guys doing? Yeah, hey, Kyle. doing better now that we can hear you. Well, get out of here. All right. <laughs> Funny. For those playing at home, Kyle will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Kyle, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Captain Henry Morgan used what Caribbean island as a base of buccaneer operations? Oh, pass. 
Who won the Best Rock Album Grammy in 1996 for Jagged Little Pill? Oh, Atlanta Small Set. Yes. Uh. Which baseball team won its third straight World Series title in 2000? Uh, Yankees. <laughs> yes. What region makes up 75% of Russia? Siberia. Yes. Which French heroine was burned at the stake in 1431? Pass. What kind of car shares a name with a 2012 album by the Black Keys? Mm-hmm. Pass. What does a caterpillar morph into? Uh, a moth. Butterfly. Butterfly, yes. Yay. Fiji is considered to be a part of which continent? Uh, Asia? No. Africa? No. Pass. Oh. One, two, three, oh. four, correct. Kyle, I oh, don't man. think this is going to go well. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's interesting because these questions are not easy, but... There's some history ones that I don't yeah. think Steve will get, but every time I don't think Steve will get an answer, he gets it. It just depends on whether or not, you know, he's he decides to get on the road and sing a song or be, you know, or... You know, do a Steve. Oh, if he pulls a Steve... Yeah, yeah you know, it takes time, a little time, a little extra time to do something there. I'm hoping he pulls a Steve. Well, All Steve... Right. Pull it. <laughs> Pull it, Steve. Pull it real good. Guys, come on. Peer pressure. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, yeah! Captain Henry Morgan used what Caribbean island as a base of buccaneer operations? The Bahamas. No. I don't know. Um, Captain Morgan spiced rum. No. That's it. Pass. <laughs> Who won Best Rock Al- the Best Rock Album Grammy in 1996 for Jagged Little Pill? Alanis Morissette. Yes. Which baseball team won its third straight World Series title in 2000? Oh, BJ's favorite team. <laughs> the Bronx Bombers, <laughs> a.k.a. the New York Yankees. Uh, yes. <laughs> what region makes up 75% of Russia? China. No. <laughs> Moscow. <laughs> no. What region? Uh, Gorbachev. No. What French heroine was burned at the stake in 1431? Oh, crap. Um, uh, Pepe Le Pew. No. French heroine. Um, Attila the Hun. No. Yes. <laughs> what kind of car shares a name with a 2012 album by the Black Keys? El Camino. Yes. What does a caterpillar morph into? A butterfly. Yes. Fiji is considered to be a part of which continent? Asia. No. One, Africa? two. Nope. Oh. One, two, three, four. It's a tie. Wow. Hey. Two ties today. Yeah, I thought Kyle had no chance, and yet Steve Kyle? pulled it out again. Just sick of tying. Yeah, Kyle, congratulations. <laughs> I, uh, you too, sir. <laughs> I don't know what you've won, but hang on the line. Someday we'll tell you what you won. Yep. Um, you won my respect. He knew that the region that makes up 75% of Russia is Siberia. Oh, how about that? Yeah, how about that? Uh, the French heroine that was burned at the stake in 1431. I think we answered this wrongly to another question you asked about. Would this be Joan of Arc? Yes, it would be. And we answered her for Lady Godiva not a couple oh, weeks Oh, yeah, back. that's right. That's why I, I laughed. about it's that like, question. If Steve doesn't remember this, he's going to kick himself. <laughs> Damn yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense now. Uh, two of the questions you didn't get correct. Fiji is considered to be a part of which continent? Well, we didn't guess was Europe. Uh, no, or no, no, Australia. There's, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Europe is nowhere near Fiji. I know. I I, I don't know geography well enough, oh, but obviously. I know continents. Okay. So it's like I would just name the other ones that weren't guessed. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Captain Henry Morgan uh, used what Caribbean island as a base of buccaneer operations? Was that Jamaica? Yeah. Yeah. Damn it. I played a lot of board games with pirates running around Jamaica. That's yeah. what I know. Isn't it fun? Yeah. I it's love a, it's a great game. It's a great fun game, actually, called Jamaica, where you do play yourself as a, a pirate. Go get Oh, spices. it's actually called Jamaica? Yeah, it's a fun game. <laughs> uh, and it's the only reason I know the answer to that question. So board games teach me something. Exactly. And, uh, well, congratulations on Kyle, because he tied Steve. I wonder if, and unless I'm wrong, because I've been wrong today, but the character Henry Morgan, uh, or was that the actor? I can't remember. I, who's the, on Mash? Was it the actor, or that was the name of the the character Henry Morgan? Oh, oh, the old dude. I think it was the actor. Ah, uh, I don't remember. I'll have yeah. to look that one up. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're in a room full of Mash fans. Yeah. I can't believe we can't come up with the answer. <laughs> well, yeah, Henry Blake. Henry Blake. There was, was Henry the Blake, character? but Harry Morgan. Oh, I suck. Never mind. <laughs> I just suck completely today. I can't remember anything. I know Chesty Morgan. Chesty Morgan. Now she. They were talking about MASH. You'd like to met What? There's a video spreading online of a security footage uh, of a 10-year-old girl scaring away a possible home invader by screaming and telling him to get out of here. 
She was in her, the car waiting for her mom when she saw the intruder approaching the house. So then she followed her stepdad's instructions to just yell if a situation like that were ever to happen. Yeah, I'd run if I was anyone. Oh, she's got a great voice for that. Oh, yeah. And she's got that, like, high-pitched, curdling, blood-curdling yeah. scream. That's man, cool. That would, that's the thing that's like, when you have all these surveillance cameras now, I mean, that would freak me out if you weren't home and you get, like, a motion thing going on and you see somebody outside your house like, with, like, the ring cams and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Could you imagine that? I, that's why I don't know if they're helpful or not to my psyche. Well, it's I think just, they're helpful because then at least you can, like, contact the authorities or I think they all have speakers. So you could act like as if, like, I'm on my way. At least maybe I could scare somebody off. That's true. That's the positive. I, you're absolutely right. In my psyche, I would feel so invaded. Like, maybe if somebody was just messing around and they just walked by and decided to leave, maybe I'd feel better not knowing that. I don't want to know that anybody's near my house when I'm not home. My friend has uh, the, I don't know if it's a ring doorbell, but he has cameras all around his house. Mm -hmm. And they woke up one morning to notifications and he thought it was just going to be a raccoon or something. And it turns out some guy was creeping around their house at like 2 a.m., walked into their backyard, unlocked the gate, and was kind of like scoping out their house. Whoa. And they were on high alert for a good like three, four months. Like his his wife didn't want to stay at home. See what I mean? Yeah. You know, and it's just one of those things of like, I don't know. He never came back. That is the weird thing, thing too, is like, so, he, not so knowing be, that. So you'd rather, I, I don't know if I'd want to be ignorant to knowing that yeah, somebody might right? have been like checking out my house. I think I would like to know. I would think so too. And they, they did submit his picture or like the video to yeah. the cops in case like, hey, if you see this guy. But I'd have, I'd print the picture of that and put it all, all right by the door and just says like, we're on to you. Yeah. To maybe like scare that person off. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, man. I, 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 Danny, that's the perfect scenario. Like I, I would have been ignorant and blissful yeah. not knowing that, that that dude was ever there. I wonder if anyone's had that happen at Listen So. That'd be interesting just to hear like if somebody was like, oh, yeah, I saw something and I was able to like, you know, reach out to them through the, the speaker or uh, call a neighbor or somebody to come and stop whatever was going to happen or just, just – like one person says, I remember noticing something. It was the best part about home security, watching Vicky fall down her stairs. Yeah. That was the other side of that. It was the best yeah. video I've ever seen. Yeah, there, this really is a double-edged sword. It's very bittersweet <laughs> because I wouldn't want to miss seeing that. But like, there's like moments like outside of my house because our house just like shoots right out and then there's like a community front lawn. And there was a kid the other day trying to play with his dog, and his dog just knocked him over, and I, I couldn't stop laughing. I caught it in the corner of my eye. I'm like, man, I wish I had like a doorbell cam. Right there, just to be able to see that moment. Well, see, now that's another reason to get a doorbell cam, because you're right in the thick of all the action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get to see you get to see those moments. Somebody says, I don't know the name of the system, but there's a surveillance camera system that's used through Wi-Fi, and you can actually chain them together with your neighbors. So through the internet, you get four houses in a six-block radius, and you have all your surveillance cameras on one channel. Ooh. Well, it's like we have like the surveillance camera. It's like a, called an outlet for our child. You know, in her room, and it's all through Wi-Fi as well. And so, like, our my mother-in-law has the a- app on hers as well. So it's kind of funny that like she could watch and check up on Tatum as she's sleeping while in the comfort of her own home, which is nice because you know, with everything that's going on, at least she gets to see her grandchild. Granted, in a sleep state, but still gets to see her on a daily basis. That is really cool. I was telling my wife about what you got. And yeah. that technology is just amazing because when, you know, when Joey and Sarah were younger, uh, about 30 some odd years ago, that we had speakers. We yep. could put a speaker in the room, but there was no way to actually watch your kid sleep. And because of the night vision camera, you could see oh. her even though her room's completely dark. That's pretty amazing. Plain as day. Yeah. And then, like, you know, she farts, you hear it, and it's hilarious. <laughs> or, like, sometimes she just talks to herself in, in her sleep. And, like, I, I just still sit there and just smile the whole time. It's super fun. It's actually kind of one of the best parts of the morning. It's like when yep. I hear his phone go off, I'm like, oh, is she awake? Yeah. And it's just fun to watch like, her just kind of babble. Like, when I get here at work, I, I turn on my phone and I just have it on, like, on, right in front of the computer. So while I'm show prepping, I'm watching. Tatum sleep. It's pretty funny. And then she sticks her butt up in the air. That's kind of cool. If you're, especially if you're a person that's away from those, you know, you, you want to catch those moments. Yeah. But for whatever you read, you know, how cool is that? Especially if you can do that for long distance situations. Huh. Check it out right now. She's asleep. Look at See that. that 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 is Suck really awesome. Thumb. Just living the good life. I just thought of so like jealous. folks in the military that could use that. You know, that's really cool.
Because you're looking at it right now and you're not home. So if you were like deployed or somewhere and you had access, you could see your little kid every day. And we could play How Quickly Can I Piss My Wife Off. I just turn on the speaker and wake her up. Like, wake up! Oh, you could even talk to her. Oh, oh, no. That's... I'm not doing that. We're about to go into the weekend and I want to have a good weekend. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. Can you show me which button does that? <laughs> no. <laughs> sure, I just, just asking for a friend. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Hey, you got something to say? I got something to say. Say it! They're wild, (laughs) mad, and on the loose. This is Listeners on the Loose. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. The people need to hear what you have to say. I mean, when I go on Facebook, I, that's what I see. You're like, oh, everybody needs to you need what I have to say. So you know, we're going to give you the same opportunity. Let those lungs fill the world yeah. with your opinions. But do remember, there is a rule Steve has. It's a simple rule, and that's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, somebody needs some advice from us. Oh, you know us. We have got the advice for the people. <laughs> it's a good one, too. All right. I'm ready. All right. So I guess over th- this person texts over my birthday, a really nice, huge TV got delivered to my place. Like something that's probably worth about thousands of dollars. All right. My boyfriend and I, who we li- I live with, we didn't know who it came from. So we asked all of our friends and relatives. No one said that they sent it. It was addressed to us, although I thought maybe it was a mistake. But uh, we loved the TV. The mystery was just so weird. And a few days ago, my ex-boyfriend reached out to me on Facebook asking if I liked the present that he sent me for my birthday. Ah! He's reached out a few times to get back together, but I've always ignored him. I didn't even respond. We broke up about two years ago. It wasn't the best relationship. Knowing that he sent it to me makes me feel gross. I want to get rid of the TV but my boyfriend loves it. He says, who cares who sent it? It's ours now. There's no point of getting rid of it because the guy's just whatever. Uh, would you keep it? Yeah, if I'm a guy, I would keep it. But I do understand what how some people are. And they just it just it skeeves them out. Yeah. I mean, I, I would definitely push to keep it. But if my significant other was like, ah, I don't want it's gross. This guy, I would, I would understand why you would be like, no, let's send it back just out of principle. Yeah, see, I'd be like, okay, well, this is awesome, but it's just forever tainted. Like, right. I totally know what she's going she through. She said taint. <laughs> I did. What a creep move. Like, Ew. you cl- clearly get the hint. Like, she doesn't respond to you for a couple of years, so I know it will get me to get back in good graces with her. A big screen TV. This is why, men, you need a friend like me. Because well, I mean, that's a stretch. Oh, you do? <laughs> you do. You need a friend like me because, Rev, you would never have gone down to Arizona and, and, and did what you did if I was in your life. If, if I'd have known you and you said, here's my plan, I'm going to go down to this girl and she's going to be the girl of my dreams down in Arizona, I would have been, dude, you're out of your freaking mind. You need a friend to tell you that these are bad ideas. Eh, you say that, but then I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't done that. Well, I can't argue with that. So I mean, we're on like, a whole deeper philosophical yeah, exactly, level. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I guess my point being is is that if you have good counsel around you, yeah. people you trust and care about, they will keep you from doing stupid things like this. Guys, your gift is not going to get her. It's just not going to get her, especially if it's been two years. And that was a waste of money when you could have gone out with that money and maybe pursued somebody that might want to be with you. And you could have spent that money on that person. See, I've got a solution for the boyfriend, though. Since she doesn't want it, all he has to do is be like, all right, babe, no worries. How about I go take it back and I go get a new one? He goes, he goes and he drives around for a couple hours and then he just comes back. With the same one. With the same one. And he just tells her that it is a new one. Then she can just be out of sight, out of mind and doesn't have to worry about it. Or just sell it and use the money to buy a different one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, that's uh, a lot of work, though. It is a lot of work. Instead but of driving it around? Yeah. What about what Chris says? He says, that guy sounds creepy. Send him uh, my address and tell him 70 inches minimum. Thanks, guys, from Chris. <laughs> How many inches? Oh, the TV. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, Vicky's idea is probably going to be the one that's going to work. Yeah. Because uh, Steve's right. You know, uh, I don't know who wrote that, if it was the woman or the guy. The woman. But, okay. Well, yeah. Here's the problem. You're going to feel the way you're going to feel. Hopefully, your dude understands. It's a pain in the ass. Because, yeah, it's a great TV, but 
I know, I know what she means. It's I get a, in her head. Hard, she probably yeah. thinks like this is opening up a window of conversation with this guy, and she doesn't want that. It's just his. It's like why is he even doing that? His energy's there. You know what I mean? Every time she looks at that TV, she's thinking of this creepoid. A lot of us guys can move past it, but I will tell you this: the great thing about the book Brain Rules, uh, what we found out about men and women, and the the misnomer was that women were more emotional than men, and it turns out that is not true. It's that women remember more details about situations than men do, which of course. If you can remember the details of a, of a traumatic experience more, more so than somebody else, you're going to have a higher emotional response to it because you remember all those details. So that TV is bringing back vivid details of whatever it is she doesn't like about the dude where, you know, you and I, Steve, on average, will be like, I don't remember much. I remember she was a douche. I want to keep the TV. I mean, that's, how <laughs> we, that's just, you know, that's what we are. And, you know, guys, you have to understand that. That's why I get this book, Brain Rules, John Medina. You're going to love it and you'll get rid of the TV. Sorry. Steve, I'll take it. All right, cool. I'll take that TV. <laughs> I'll take the TV. Listeners on the loose, 206. So just throw it up on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. There you go. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Tag let's, them on it, too. Let's go to Hi. Tim in Kent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Could give it to charity, too. That would be a thing. Oh, yeah, charity. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Hello? Hi. I'm sorry. Hello? <laughs> Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry, sorry, Tim. Every once in a while, we, I just get a response from my fine co-host over here that just ah, brings me back to the good old days of living in the Northeast. <laughs> that's, that's what it does. Tim, what you got for us, buddy? Yeah, so I'm calling earlier about um, how you snuck into different places. Yes. yes. How about you, buddy? Yeah, so uh, me and my wife went to a um, Rob Schneider comedy show at yes. uh, Emerald Queen Casino. And um, when he was done, he was uh, doing free pictures and signings. And there was such a big crowd that... I played security. I'm a big, small guy, so I um, went behind the curtain and acted like his security guard to get closer to him for the wife to take a picture with me with him. And then a director in the back was like, are you security? Who are you with? And I'm like, um, I'm with this guy. And they're like, well, I don't see your badge. I'm like, well, got to go. Thanks for having me. Oh, damn. Did you get the picture? I did get the picture. I took my picture and everything. It was, everything was good. I, I played for security for him for like five minutes. I had to back up the crowd. That's pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> He said Rob Schneider, right? Yeah. Remember when Rob, Rob Schneider, Schneider yeah. came in and he brought in his own like little teapot and that was tea bizarre. maker that was yeah. and his hippie like stoner friends were there with him too. Yeah. Like, none of it made any sense and it was nothing that I was expecting when Rob Schneider came it in. It was so surreal. He was yeah, he was definitely like Mr. Calm, Mr. Hey Man. Could be nice. Yeah, he was he was a lot of fun, but yeah, I had never in my life saw a guy bring his own teapot in and just wait, like, can I plug this in somewhere? I'm like, you can do it. This is like K Rob, what's this about, man? Yeah, this is man. awesome. Yeah, he had a specific type of tea that he liked, and also the whole yeah. There, there's a, an old blog of it. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, on YouTube, if you just type in BJ Shane Rob Schneider, you can find it. And here's the problem: How are you not going to talk about that if you're if you know you're doing a radio show and you just you? I mean, he's got that everywhere he goes. If he pulls that move, he's like, well, this is what I do. Yeah, and he's got a little teapot. It looks like a little mini coffee pot, actually. Yeah, he loves his tea. Uh, you know what? Good for Rob. You know what? He's having a good, good life. Good for Rob. Good for Rob. I just saw him in Demolition Man, and it was really awesome <laughs> seeing him again. Yeah, It's a good movie, by the way. God, I, mean, I love that movie. You would think it's not Friday from the attitude of some of our texters. What's going on with our texters? It's, it's, I like this one. 77999. Come on, happiness people. This one. This is, this is the subject in question I want to ask. Why are you all... Why, why, are, why you are all douchebags? Oh. Wow. Why you... One more time on reading this. I, I want to make sure I get I it want right. the question. I want the subject in question to be asked why you are douchebags. Oh, why you are douchebags. I'm not sure why we are. I think it's because of Danny. You're welcome. Uh, Ever since Danny joined the show. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's interesting because it's different. Because if you go, Danny, why are you a douchebag? As opposed, as opposed to why you are a douchebag, it's a, it, you know what I mean. It's very Yoda ask. <laughs> yeah, douchebags you are. Douchebag you are. You know what? It's know because why we are. They're all mad at me today because I wear my Dion's pizza shirt, it. and it's just making everyone mad and douchey. So yeah. sorry, um, that's probably it. Look, I think it's in my nature. I, 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 if you tune I was born into this way, <laughs> if you tune into this show and do not expect a level of douchebaggery out of me. I don't know what you're thinking. I mean, it's been 20 years I've been in this town. I could see maybe the first five, you're a little surprised. But come on, at this point, I don't know why Steve's a douchebag, though. You'll have to figure that out. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. I need a change. You've been cold to me too many times. You're wasting money. You're a leaker. So I'm replacing you. 
with a new Navian tankless water heater. No more cold shoulders, no more leaks, just spa-like comfort and Navian peace of mind. And oh, I want you out today. When you're ready for a change, ask your plumber about Navian or visit tanklessmadesimple.com. Count on Navian. Take back your space. Stop storing old electronics you'll never use again. Recycle your computers, monitors, and televisions for free with eCycle Washington. This free program can be used by households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations across the state. Drop off unwanted TVs, computers, and monitors at over 300 locations in Washington State for free. Please check for the drop-off location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org. That's one word, eCycleWashington.org, and click on the Where Can I Recycle link. BJ and Mix mornings on the Rock. Ninety nine point nine KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show at two zero six four two one Rock. Text us at seven seven nine nine nine. Let's go to Justin and Puyallup. Justin, you are on the Rock. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Justin. What you got for us, buddy? So. Like you guys, I'm a nerd, and <laughs> I'm not, you know, but I go to the comic book conventions as a comic book artist, but I also go to a lot of them to go and just be part of it. Um, but I'm saving my money. I'm not spending it there. I'm actually personally taking my money and setting it aside, and the goal is whatever I was going to spend on there, either blow it all at the end when everything opens, or I'm going to buy a truck. What are you guys doing with the money you're saving from not going to all these conventions and Steve, you're not going to wrestling stuff, and, you know, everybody's not doing something they're normally doing. What are you guys doing with the extra money? Well, yeah, that's an interesting thing, because, I mean, like, Steve, you had a vacation, and, of course, yeah. you're not spending your money on that vacation. A lot of us are, are, if you're stuck at home, yeah, you're not spending money on, well, big events anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, you know, honestly, I feel like I was, with, with the newborn, I find a lot of my money is going there. At least I see these PayPal <laughs> statements showing up on my email that my well. wife will buy certain things and I get it like it's not like she's doing it to hide it it's just like you have a newborn you have to get stuff or you get excited about oh that's a cute outfit I want to get it for her so I think all of our money right now is going into Tatum yeah I'm trying to be you better pay us back this is just a loan (laughs) (laughs) that ain't happening (laughs) oh I just I cannot wait oh the days that are coming ahead for him Uh, I like the idea whether you're going to blow it on some big thing that you get to go to or if in fact you're going to you're getting yourself a truck Uh, I think I'm going to be pragmatic this is I mean Here's the thing. I hate to say it, but I'm saving my money because I just don't know what tomorrow looks like and don't know if I got to be like a squirrel and hide all them nuts. I just don't know. But I think it's just where I'm at in life. Uh, Vicky. Uh, well, we've seen your family, BJ. You're full of nuts. Hey. <laughs> Lady. How about you, Vic? Because uh, I know you're not doing a lot of stuff either. No, but I'm actually taking the money I would have spent at con or on vacation. I'm actually just putting it back either into my house or oh, that's into cool. different arts and crafts. Well, you know what? Right. Investing in your house is never a bad idea. No. I'm uh, actually buying lots of Dungeons & Dragons miniatures. Oh, yeah. oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, my wife got me some for my birthday, oh, and they boy. have pre-painted ones, so I don't have to worry about painting them. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and so I'm spending more money than I really need to. I'm really trying to stay away from Kickstarter. There's a bunch of games that I'm just letting my buddies get, and I'm trying to be as good as I can be on that. But, Justin, I'm probably, you know, it's it's seeping out a little bit. It's like, well, i got to do something. The cons are all closed, and... You know, just like a lot of people are are really sad about the fact that concerts are not going to be happening. Uh, this is this is a. Uh, uh. Someone even said, if you could attend any concert, what would it be? With with everything that's going on right now, like what would it be that first show well, you could the, see? It was that three that show that I wanted to see with uh, you guys, uh, oh, Fall Out Boy, Weezer, Weezer and, 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 and Green Day, and Green Day. Yeah, uh, that I was so excited because really I thought at the time all I really knew was Green Day, but. How about this? I've actually, I know it's horrible, but I've, I've downloaded some Fallout Boy. Look out. I'm out of control. I'm, sure, I'm in the, going down. I'm reliving going the 90s. down, down. To the yeah. yeah now, now you're into Danny's world. Yeah, sure. sure. I know. <laughs> oh, it's so no. fun. But Danny and I kind of look at each other once in a while, and we know that there's a, there's a lot of Venn diagram crossing over of the stuff that he likes and I like. Yeah, I'll show you some playlists this weekend. Nice. Yeah. Give him some uh, saves the day. And- I've always, yeah. you, know, you know who else you I've been getting into? Yeah. And I'm really, I really love this band just because they're such a-holes. Uh, but you guys, when they're a pop band, that's actually got a real sarcasm to them. Five seconds of summer. No, 
Uh, I don't even I know, know if they're still the around. Uh, they're a 90s band, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, maybe Gang? a 2000s, 90s band. Bowling for Soup. Oh, oh yeah, they're oh, great. Wow. I love those guys. But, they're still around. But I just started getting into them. I mean, I knew 1985 and maybe a couple other songs, but I started listening to their catalog, and these guys are really just like, they're, I know. they're such douches. I love them. I know who we need to get you into, because it, it, mel- it brings together both of your worlds. Now that you're falling in love with like the Weezer pop punk or pop rock sound, yeah. and you love sci-fi, Nerf Herder. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've heard totally of Nerf Herder. Totally heard of them. Yeah. yeah, but I've never listened but to them. But you need to spend... Now that you've kind of now become a fan of Weezer... Nerf Herder, huh? They are mm-hmm. right up that alley, but they have songs called She's a Slee Stack. They're all about sci-fi. All right. Yeah, I so. have heard of Nerf You'd Herder. you love them, dude. I, I, they're they're really a great would. band. I just never my, checked them out. First band I ever saw live in Seattle was Nerf Herder with Bloodhound Gang. That's okay. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. And Rock Candy. That's a good Send me an email. I look up Nerf Herder. Yeah. Thanks, man. They have a song called Courtney Love where they want to sit on her... Somewhere. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Or they want her to sit on a certain part of yeah. the yeah. I, You know what? I've well, listened. There were, uh, you know, I know people have opinions about Courtney Love, but I have to say there mm-hmm. were moments in her life where I was like, you oh, know, yeah. hey, Courtney. Speaking of nerd stuff, uh, somebody asked the question, Rock, did you hear about The Rock? He's doing a show for Netflix. It's a superhero that I've never even heard of. Yeah, uh, and, and a lot of us haven't heard because it's a, a comic book that was, I think, in the 90s called Ball and Chain. It's actually a pretty clever concept. I never read the the book. Is it a superhero? Yeah, here and and, and it's a, it's a nineties comic book. But again, it might be like an independent. I don't know if it was Image or Dark Horse. It was some little place called uh, Homage. Oh gosh, I don't even Homage. Know. I don't even know those folks. Yeah, it just looks like a little wow. uh, publisher. Yeah, and so the idea is, and by the way, Emily Blunt, who's of course John Krasinski's wife, mm. uh, and we've seen her a couple of times on uh, some good news. So The Rock and her are husband and wife who don't get along, but their superpowers only work well when they're together. So in order oh. for them to fight crime and do it, you know, and really, like the Wonder Twins, but <laughs> pissed not off twins, at each other, but married. Yeah. And um, Emily Blunt and Johnson and, and Dwayne Johnson were in. Uh, you don't care about it, see? But they were in Disney's Jungle Cruise, and that seemed, uh, and that's coming out next year. So it looks like maybe they thought that the team was a really good team. But they're, I heard they're producing this show, so maybe they just realize that they have good chemistry together and said we should do more stuff together. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? That makes sense. You, you yeah. know what? That may, if, if they're producing it themselves, that makes a lot of sense. Dude, nowadays, I mean, with this Netflix world, you can do what you want if you have any money. You don't need studios anymore because Netflix will take almost anything you give them. Hmm. I mean, right now, yeah. I just was at NBC or some other network is is hurting up for is hurting for TV because of this coronavirus. So they got a show out of Canada, some some drama. Yeah, I, I saw that. Well, you're out of content, so what are you going to do? Tap into some other places that maybe have popular content that you could just present to a whole new audience. I'll watch it, uh, no doubt about it. I'll watch it. Oh, with this one with The Rock? Yeah. Oh, of course I'm going to watch it. The Netflix. Rock's in it. Yeah, it's on Netflix. I already paid for that crap, so I might as well enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see though. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in our world of TV viewing. We're all, ex- you know, we're all getting stuff now, but nobody's doing anything. Not nobody. Yeah. The WWE is continuing to put out content. AEW. So now it's time for you to become a wrestling fan. BK. God, I just don't think. Actually, I, I this would, is the worst time for yeah. me to try and recommend you watching it because it's, <laughs> it's a struggle even for me to watch. Yeah. That you, but you know what, Steve? You're right. What else, what else do we have? I mean, they ended one of my shows in a way that I know this, the coronavirus uh, basically affected it because I feel like they had to rewrite it a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. It was lame. And I was like, this is not a way to end a season. But it was like, I, I see why they had to do it that way. So it's almost like we made a cliffhanger. I'm like, did you? And I, I don't know if this is true, but a texture brought up a question and said, uh, or I brought up a statement. Fun fact, lead singer of Bowling for Soup, the voice of Chuck E. Cheese. Really? If so, that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. To be able to say that you're the voice of Chuck E. Cheese, I mean, that's cred. That's pretty, that's pretty good cred. I mean, I'd rather yeah. be that than like Bono from U2. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I suppose if I had a choice, Steve, I'm still, I don't know if I want to, I think I might be Bono. Apparently in 2012, Chuck E. Cheese chose him to be the new voice for their mascot. Oh. To re- when they revamped him and to be like that animated kind of character. If you've so seen he's any the voice of Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah. No, he is the voice. And um, Danny, have they done anything new? Uh, Bowling for Super, or you say yeah, they did a song about Alexa Bliss, uh, the wrestler. Yeah, just recently. Uh, that's great. I mean, I mean, did they do like an album? Like, have they have a new album out or anything? That I don't they? think they've done a new album. They just tour a lot. Yeah. And now that they've been doing quarant- they've been doing some quarantine stuff, like just like from home and whatnot, like everything. But- yeah. 
Um, I mean, look, I know it's very poppy, but I just love the fact that they're, you know, they're, they're, they're a hole. When I say they're a holes, like they'll write songs about girlfriends, but they'll be just completely unabashed, like how much they hate them. Oh yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The, the song about Alexa, it's, it's like how the singer is just obsessed with Alexa Bliss, and, they, and then they became friends. Oh, that's cool. And she's in the video as well. Uh, it's got 1.4 million views already, Jeez. and they just put it out a couple months ago. What a life that if you're, you're, you're somebody enough that you really can dig somebody and go, hey, I'm going to write a song about you, and then she shows up. And the video is great because it's a total uh, tribute to the movie Weird Science. Oh, is it? Yeah, where they create Alexa Bliss. Oh, that is. With their computer. That is pretty while awesome. While wearing bras on their heads. <laughs> and there, oh, there she comes in. Yep. That's pretty awesome. There we go. Okay, I, I take that video off. Sorry, Steve, is, is Alexa it, looks really good. In the video. Making me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> she looks good in the video. Um, yeah, uh, it is listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Two zero six four two one rock. Text us at seven seven nine nine nine. Somebody said I, I read that Don Henley is selling handwritten lyrics for charity. If you were going to buy handwritten lyrics, who would it be, and for what song? Now I want to I want to put this out there. It's not stuff that he did back when he originally wrote a song. Mm-hmm. They're just saying, hey, man, I like the song Desperado. Don, would you just write some lyrics down, handwritten I'm lyrics? I'm okay with that. And I'll pay. Uh, and, and how about this? He's raised more than $45,000 for a Texas food bank doing just that, writing out the lyrics to Desperado. Uh, someone was willing to pay over $33,000 for that. Okay, I don't have that kind of cash to throw around, but like if I was rich and I'm a big Eagles fan, I wouldn't care that it's not the original handwritten. If it's still handwritten by the guy who wrote the song, I think that's kind of cool. I would frame it and look at it from time to time and question my financial decisions. See, you you know, you being a music guy, I would love something from I would ask the Wachevskis if they would write down like the, the like, like the scene treatments for the uh-huh. Matrix. Like, okay. you know, it's like the opening scene, you know, yeah. where Trinity's spinning around and all that and go, I'd love to have something like that if they could just write it down for me and go, here's how it was going out. That would be great. Because think about I, like that. these days, if I think about like current artists, like if I was going to say, oh, I want a Gloria Sun song, I'm going to go with like one of their songs. There's a very good chance that the song was written lyrically on an iPhone or, yeah. or on, a, a, on an app on a, on a phone, like a notes app. You're right. So having it handwritten would be, it wouldn't be the original because like, what are you going to do? Send me a screenshot? Here you go. Here's the original lyrics. <laughs> You know, I'll send you my phone. You know what's fascinating to me? Tell me what you think is a better value. Because he hand wrote the lyrics to Desperado mm-hmm. just recently. Desperado. That got 33000 And yet he was only able, I mean, it's still a good amount of money, but he was only able to get another $12,000 for an acoustic guitar signed by him and the current Eagles lineup, which... I don't know who's in the lineup that you know is like maybe old school because some of the some of the members I don't think are with us anymore. But I feel like the guitar should get more money. Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. I, although I kind of would if, if you said, "Would you like this autographed guitar or these handwritten lyrics?" I would rather the handwritten lyrics. I don't know why. It just feels more personal. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Thirty. Plus, but- I don't play the guitar, so I don't really need it. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. All like, right. I would prefer an a autographed tambourine from Eddie Vedder over an autographed guitar. I wouldn't turn that down. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely, to answer the question, I would go at a Pearl Jam song, most likely. Uh, like, present tense. Oh, nice. Yeah. And handwritten. Hand, yeah, oh, yeah. No, yeah. I don't want to type. Would that be here for just a word probably? Yeah. I'll type it up for you. That's fantastic. Rev, anybody, uh, any, any band or something that you would like, uh, something handwritten? Um, thinking about it, I actually kind of would like, and I would want to watch him do it, but I would love to get Kid Rock to do Ba Wit Da Ba. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Just because I want to see him trying to uh, write out Ba Wit Da Ba. Oh, bang, okay. bang, diggy, diggy. diggy yeah. Up yeah. Chuck the Boogie. Yeah, all of that. For a minute there, it was sounding very stocky, but now oh. I understand why you'd want to see yeah, him Yeah, yeah, I just want to see him do that. Yeah. For me, I think it'd have to be like Evanescence and do just like the most annoyingly overplayed song that I still love, Bring, Bring Me to Life. life. Yeah. Yep. It is yeah. still like it. Everyone. Uh, Did the rapper guy write the Wake Me Up part? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Otherwise, I'm not going to accept it. Nice. Who am I right said Fred, I'm too sexy. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Right? Wow. I like that. You are probably going to be the only person asking for that, too, so he shouldn't have writer's cramp. But I want the word Percy Cat to be written in all caps. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, all right. Well, that's going to be an extra couple thousand dollars. And Danny, so, what are you going to do? Some song from Titanic? Yeah, yeah probably. Exactly. Celine Dion, you got it right there. <laughs> Woo! There you go. Celine, could you please? Yeah. And you, you want teardrops on it to see the, you know, because it was such a sad thing? Only from Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, yeah. perfect. I was going to say, Danny will provide the teardrops. Yeah, when that's he gets a good point. <laughs> Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. 
How do I figure out who my creditors are? Now, people a lot of times have had a lot, a long time of not having good credit and having collections, and so they, they're concerned that uh, you may be concerned that you, you won't be able to find all your creditors if you file bankruptcy. How will I know which collection agency has my credit card bill from 10 years ago now? Uh, and that's that's something that's hard to keep track of when because credit collection agencies transfer your debts all over the place. But we will pull all your credit bureaus, and by getting all three of your credit bureaus, we'll be able to tell who has your credit and debt now, uh, which collection agencies have had it in the past, and we'll make sure that we file all your creditors when we file your bank bankruptcy so that nothing slips through the cracks. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. If your tank water heater's over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian's strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit tanklessmadesimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. (laughs) 